In 2019, my next guest was caught up in the London Bridge terror attack at Fishmongers Hall. Darren Frost was working as a communications manager at the rehabilitation event when one former prisoner killed two of the hosts, Jack Merritt and Saskia Jones. Tonight in a new documentary, Darren reveals how he stepped in to stop the terrorist using a narwhal tusk. And Darren Frost joins us now. Thank you so much, Darren. I, I can imagine you know, me watching that, I find that really difficult. And for you, it must continue to do so after this amount of time. Just if you can, Darren, take us back to why you were at Fishmongers Hall that day, because it's actually really relevant. Yeah, thank you, Christine. So um, at Fishmongers Hall, it was a, a wonderful event, a five-year celebration um, of a partnership between a few agencies, including Cambridge University where they were doing a program uh, learning together, which was really wonderful. They brought two different sides of society together, people in prison and those students within Cambridge to study together and learn from each other. So those were criminology students. Um, and they learned from each other. I thought it was a really powerful thing where um, those students all became students together and they'd learned lessons from each other and they supported each other, just like Jack was supporting many of the people who were there. Mm -hmm. And exa exactly that. And um, unfortunately, I mean, the day had been running according to plan. It was very enjoyable, very, very successful. Um, but one former prisoner, he had been re released from prison 11 months before and in fact wasn't allowed into London, but had been given a day exemption to come to this event. Usman Khan had come to the event strapped with kitchen knives and the, the unthinkable began to happen in the afternoon. Um, as we mentioned, um, two incredible students um, lost their lives that day, Saskia Jones and Jack Merritt, two people who were there to help improve other people's lives. Um, and it was, a it was just a terrible story. There were other people injured that day too, but sadly they lost their lives. Um, you jumped to, like many others, to try to stop what was happening and it did turn into chaos, didn't it? No one knew what was happening exactly. You can't believe your own eyes. Yeah, there was, there was a lot of panic in the hall at the time. Um, no one really knew what was going on because we we're in the hall upstairs and all the commotion was happening downstairs. Um, and yeah, so it was actually, there was an, another uh, ex-prisoner who sat next to me um, he, he revealed to me later that he was Muslim and he didn't believe in the actions of that man. But he mentioned to me that it didn't sound like kids fooling around because mm -hmm. someone mentioned kids got in the building and there were skateboards or something. And he said, that's not the cry or shout of kids. And that was my spur to action. And I stood up at the same time as Steve Gallant and we ran across the hall to go and respond. Mm -hmm. um, and what happened next? So you mentioned Steve Glant alongside another gentleman, John Crilly. Um, Steve Glant, who actually was currently serving time at that point and had been on a day release um, scheme as well. And John Crilly had served time in prison. Yeah. But you all came together in that one moment. It didn't matter about what had gone before or what had happened in any of your lives you collectively came together to try and accost Usman Khan. Yeah, and, and there was Lucas as well, who worked for Fishmongers Hall, who had also used a ceremonial po uh, pike to uh, try and delay the attack. Um, yeah, we all came together and worked together um, because we all had a common purpose, which was to protect the other people who were at the event. Um, it, it was a crazy, crazy situation. and. If you wrote it as fiction, no one would believe it mm. because of the, the craziness that ensued. But I'm really pleased that we managed to stop his attack and prevent further loss of life other than his own. Um, yeah. At risking yourselves, of course, Darren, at this point. And we see this still, this is this narwhal tusk that we talk of. And there was two of them hanging, wasn't there? And you see yeah. this in the documentary tonight and you, you spotted it on the way out. Yeah, you'll see that they've got gold gilding because they've fixed them. So we broke two of them. Steve Gallant broke one and I broke the other one, unfortunately, and they are priceless, I believe. Um, but the Fishmongers Hall has put them back together. Yeah, remarkable things. I grew up in South Africa and um, my dad had an elephant tusk in the house. So I've seen ivory, I grew up with it because in the 70s you could buy it on the side of the street. And my dad had one because he was British and it was a novelty. Um, and so I've handled ivory before. And so, yeah, it, it was a really strange item. I was actually going to, back to the servery where we'd had lunch to get a bay marine lid and a ladle, which would have been very different headlines mm -hmm. had I got those. 
Um, but yeah, we managed to subdue him. And the, the issue was that he had said to us when we held him at bay that he was waiting for the police and he showed us the bomb. So in my mind, the police arriving wasn't actually anything to protect us, actually put us in more danger. Mm -hmm. But the police didn't know that. So that's why I was hanging onto his hands and wouldn't release him when the police were trying to pull me off. Because mm -hmm. I thought he had a trigger and that, that he would blow it up. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, really intense. Incredibly intense, intense, intense moment. Um, the interesting twist to this entire story, Darren, is we, we talk of John and, and Steve there. And they were, they had, like I say, prisoner indeed currently serving at that time, as Steve was. But um, they were heroes for that one day. Um, and Steve says something really interesting in the documentary where he says some people continue to do wrong, but there are some of us who are willing to change and have changed. And it was a real sense of this rehabilitation, which comes back to why you were all there in the first place at the Fishmongers Hall, and very much now what your life passion is about. It's rehabilitation. Yeah, I, I think they are prime examples of um, justice not being so black and white. Like, because someone has done something wrong once a long time ago, it doesn't define their future. Mm. The same as if you do something really good, such as heroic action, does that define your future? Is that mm. one incident what defines you? Um, I think what John and Steve did there in contrast to the attacker was show that people can change and they put their lives at risk to save others. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and then uh, Steve and I were, were quite frustrated with the situation with uh, housing for prison leavers. And sometimes you need the foundations to change though. So even with all the best will in the, in the world, if you're released into homelessness, 67% of those people will reoffend within the year. Yeah. And you can understand why, if you don't have a roof over your head, you don't have the basics, you're trying to survive on a minimum amount of money, you, you go into crime to survive. And so that's why we set up the uh, social enterprise Own Merit CIC, which is a, a nod to Jack and Saskia with Own Merit. And um, yeah, we're trying to house people who would have otherwise been released into homelessness. Mm -hmm. um, we got a small grant from UK Research and Innovation to start up because we had this big plan. Steve and I would work together on it for about two years, mm -hmm. but needed a bit of money to, to get it going. And now it's happening. Well, Darren, it's, it's so lovely to meet you. It's a, it's a really moving documentary. And thankfully, the, you did step up that day. Goodness knows how many more people could have been injured or indeed lost. Yeah. Um, it was remarkable actions from all of you. Um, you can watch London Bridge Facing Terror. It's on tonight, 9pm on Channel 4. Thank you, Thank you Darren. So much.